Hey, right, so in this pro tip video, I'm going to show you how to uh, quickly create a sequence using one of the uh, waveforms in Curve 2. Uh, Curve 2 is a really cool synth that takes a fundamentally different approach to sound architecture than I've encountered in many other synths, uh, relying on drawn waveforms to do pretty much everything. Um, one of the things that, that's really cool about this is it actually shows off the fact that when something at audio rate is uh, pitched down, it uh, just becomes uh, another mod source. So um, the fact that an oscillator pitched down becomes an LFO or a, uh, an oscillator pitched down can become a step sequencer or just a mod source um, is, uh, is pretty cool. And, it, and when, you, when you take that understanding and you move it over to different synths, it's, it's, uh, it's a very kind of eye-opening realization, I think, for a lot of people. So this, this synth is actually one of the better kind of implementations of, of that. And... Um, it's uh, it's pretty cool to be able to kind of work with it in that sense. You can do some really fluid things with it. So uh, to start with here, I've got uh, a really simple uh, patch. I'll just switch it over to single note polyphony here. So it's big and it's bright. There's a little bit of FM going on. Um, it's uh, all going through this uh, low pass filter here, which I'll just drop down. Um, and I've got three waveforms essentially in use here. Waveform one is oscillator one. It's this kind of complex square with a little bit of a saw thing going on at the end. Um, waveform two is a simple sawtooth. Uh, waveform three is uh, kind of like a square wave with a little bit of a downslope. And because of the way that the synth is designed, you can um, adjust all of these different waves however you choose to. So you can add kind of subtle nuances here and there just to kind of make it brighter or duller according to how you want it. So it's a great sounding synth, um, but one, one of the cool things that you can do with it is you can use all of these waveforms for different things. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab wave 10 here um, and I will clear it. Um, wave 10, I'm actually going to assign to an LFO slot over here now. It's, um, it, I'm not going to use it as an LFO. Um, I'm going to use it as essentially as a step sequencer. So um, it's all going to be based off of the root note. So if you play a C, basically uh, the 50% value is uh, going to be C. Um, plus 100% is going to be up an octave, down 100% is going to be down an octave. Um, so, so essentially what, what you need to do to set this up is you need to take wave 4, uh, which is going to be beat sync to one bar and over here apply uh, LFO4 because that's the slot that it's in to pitch 100%. So right now we're just going to hear a straightforward dropped pitch. Um, as you start here, we'll hear it raised up. As you start adding in different uh, values, um, you can control what's going on with the pitch. So I'm just going to quickly make a, a simple sequence here, um, which I'm going to do as quarter notes. And this should make sense. Um, I'm basically taking this one bar and dividing it into four based upon the little markers that I have to work with here. And I'm just going to do a simple kind of up and down uh, octaved sequence here. And actually at the end, I'll make it uh, drop down a little bit rather than um, a full octave, just to let you hear something a bit more interesting. So, let's get that a bit more exact here. So that sounds uh, interesting at the moment. Um, there's there's a lot of other things you can you can do with this. Obviously, you can get much more intricate with your sequences. You can basically draw anything you want and use that as a sequence. If you decide that the rate is too slow, um, I can bounce it up to um, this. Now represents a half bar instead of a full bar, which is going to take this from being eighth notes and make it sixteenths. Maybe we'll leave it there for now, actually, because it sounds kind of cool. Um, let's do a nice big downward glide at the end here, followed by an upward glide. That'll sound interesting. 
Now, the other thing that I want to do is I want to create something that sounds a little bit like uh, an envelope on the filter here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial up uh, LFO3. Um, I'm going to use Wave 9 for LFO3. With wave 9, I'm actually going to want to be just a simple sawtooth because I want to do, um, I want to have a, a sound that's very similar to kind of like a, a TB303 envelope. So I'm just going to truncate this a little bit, tighten it up. And I'm going to take LFO3 and I'm going to apply it to the filter cutoff. And I'm also going to make this uh, represent, because we're working with 16th notes, this is now going to represent uh, a 16th note here, uh, as opposed to being a half bar, which is what we have going on in LFO4. So now we should hear something that sounds a little bit more like your typical kind of uh, acid sequence or something like that. So um, that's a, a really basic kind of uh, overview of how you can use the waveforms in Curve 2 to modulate things. Um, they don't have to simply be oscillators. They can also be uh, uh, secondary envelopes. Um, in this case, the, the it's, it's an LFO that's essentially taking on the role of an envelope uh, within uh, relation to that sequence that I have running. Um, you can use it as a, as a sequencer. You can use them as uh, just simply as little mod sources to control uh, the amount of uh, FM or resonance or whatever you like. Um, it's uh, it's a really cool synth, and this is just uh, one of the ways in which you can really kind of uh, dig a little bit deeper than than what's initially obvious with it. So thanks for watching, and definitely uh, check out uh, the other Pro Tips videos on on my channel. Uh, subscribe if you like, and happy music making.